Squishies, this is Dirty Pair, episode 22. Uh, we did it. 463 people found. So this is the second part of the two-parter that we watched the first part of last time. Um, another very solid episode. Um, not a ton of humor, but some really great action sequences. Um, and I enjoyed kind of the role reversal of Yuri being the one running around defusing bombs while Kay is using her quote-unquote feminine wiles. Though you'll note that's really not what she's doing. Um, the, they make a point of establishing Crocker as being sexist uh, with his women should be more compliant comment before Kay pulls the, you know, won't you at least let me put on my makeup before I die delaying tactic. Um, which isn't about, perf I mean, it's performing femininity in a way that puts him off guard and manipulates him, but not in the way that is usually meant by, you know, feminine wiles, that it's not a seduction of any kind. It's uh, instead playing on his idea of gender roles, because if somebody says that women should be compliant, then odds are that they have a lot of other toxic gender roles in their head, and so women are vain is going to be in there as well, and something that you can tap and use against them. Mm. I really like um, that that whole sequence is thus Kay using her, her makeup, her earring to set him up and put Yuri in a position to save the day. Uh, the teamwork between them in this episode is excellent. Um, even though they spend most of it in separate spaces. And that's well done. Uh, the resolution of it, I didn't see coming how the boy did it, but it was obvious that the boy was involved in the kidnapping. Um, what it actually was was basically a harmless hacking prank, uh, which I like. You know, um, the boy didn't actually do anything super wrong. Like, he honestly did have every reason to believe that no one would get hurt. Um, because he wasn't dealing with kidnappers. Um, he was just faking some computer records so the ship actually was empty when it left. Um, which is very well done uh, use of a kind of locked room type mystery. Um, very good resolution of that because, of course, that's how a paradox always has to resolve itself, is something which we thought was true was never actually true um, because it can't actually contradict itself. Some it, what it's actually doing is contradicting an assumption we don't realize we're making. And as it turns out, it's an assumption that Yuri already pointed out was being made, that the passengers were on the ship when it left. Um, so bravo on the show for that. Uh, that is a really solid example of, you know, a well-executed mystery. Um, were the clues there for the viewer to figure it out on their own? Mm, but that's not necessarily um, what makes a good mystery. Uh, I think it's more that the conclusion is satisfying than that it be possible to guess in advance. Mm, we should be able to look back and say, oh, okay. 
that's more important than being able to say, I saw this coming. Um, that's just generally a rule for good plotting in general, uh, really. Um, it's less important whether or not a viewer can say, I saw this coming, than it is for the viewer to be able to look back and say, yes, this follows and is satisfying. Um, so, yeah, like I was saying, that's all well executed. Uh, the boy, you know, his motivations we already understood from the previous episode, that he was somehow involved was already pretty clear from the previous episode, and so this episode doesn't waste time. Basically, the first scene has him reveal um, how he did it. Uh, and again, Yuri is central to getting that information out of him. Uh, the... You know, and again, it's it's the two pilots who kind of screwed it all up by staging their own kidnapping that took advantage of Arthur's. So he's not really culpable, and so. It's a satisfying conclusion that he, uh, Kay and Yuri choose not to include him in their report. Though, we have to assume the two actual kidnappers will. But, honestly, who's going to believe them? That a child set all that up. And come to think of it, they may not actually know, if they communicated with Arthur entirely by computer, they may not actually know who he is. Uh, just that he was someone with access. Um, I like that Arthur's hacking was itself, like, mostly social engineering, because that's honestly how most security breaches in real life happen. Um, he didn't acquired the passwords through technical wizardry. He acquired the passwords by quietly observing when he was left alone in the computer room to play. Um, that's how you do it. Um, so that's again, well done by the show, because um, I don't know that that was particularly common knowledge in 1985, the way that I hope it's getting to be by now. Um, and, yeah, those are all positive things, I think. Uh, the one kind of sour note the episode sounds, and it's not a major one, it's just a small thing that I was kind of like, eh, that's not ideal is that it presents as a happy ending that, um... Eric? That's not the guy's name. Something that began with E, I think. The, um... guy that... the investigator uh, that was married to Shannon, Arthur's dad, I don't remember his name. Anyway, that Shannon and he got back together and appeared to not be getting divorced uh, because, yeah, from the perspective of the kid, maybe that's better, but also maybe there are very good reasons they were getting divorced. Um, and while well, divorce is rough for a kid, um, being stuck in a home with two people who despise each other can very easily be worse over time. Um, or even just who resent each other. Um, 
it's a very kind of socially conservative conclusion for a show that gave us the, you know, gloriousness of episode eight um, that posited that trans people are common and accepted uh, in the future. Uh, and now we get divorce bad. Families stay together. And we don't know. We didn't see Shannon and Dude um, in normal relationship circumstances. We saw them in a crisis. And yeah, people with a history together can come together in a crisis, and they may even have convinced themselves that they still love each other, but odds are good that there's a reason they were getting divorced. Um, and that reason will resurface as things return to normal. Um, so that ending felt kind of a little packed. Uh, Kay and Yuri going off to the beach together, that's more fun. Um, I like that part, uh, that they finally get their vacation, uh, that I feel like has been dangled in front of them for the entire series. Um, good on them. They really earned it in this one. Uh, like I said, they had some dynamic teamwork in this one. They, you know, good action sequences, a good mystery at the heart of this two-parter. Um, just really well done. Um, pair of episodes. So, other than that one sour note, and even that, like I said, not that bad. Um, well done. You know? Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my Patreon for early access to vlogs, gaming videos, essays, and more. And I will see you all next time. Bye!